After the video on the Primark armors, we have now decided that we will have to apply the offense aspect as well. So here in this video, we will showcase the special weapons, crafted specifically or used uniquely by each of the Primarchs, be it during the Great Crusade, or the Horus Heresy, or even now in the Age of the Dark Imperium. So suit up your flag and carapace armors, cause we are diving deep into Primark lore. Let's get to it. Let's start with Lion L. Johnson. He has the Wolf Blade. This was an ancient dull black chainsaw created from humanity's distant past and was kept waiting for the lion, and it was only used by him. This weapon was instrumental in destroying the corrupted knights of Lupus that resided on Caliban. He also had the lion sword. This is a masterfully crafted weapon forged during the Great Crusade and imbued with ancient and powerful technologies. It shone with a pale inner light, igniting anything it cuts with a sudden burst of flame. Additionally, the Lion Sword is powered by a compact energy field, making it a power sword capable of channeling energies to increase its cutting and effectiveness. In the era Indomitus, he wields Fealty, which is an impressive power sword crafted in the traditional style of the arming swords of the Knights of Caliban. It is of Primarch's size, indicating its exceptional size and potency. The Emperor's Shield is another remarkable weapon associated with Lion L. Johnson. It is made of Ormite, a highly durable material, and was once wielded by the Emperor himself. Now let's go to another Primarch, Fulgrim. He holds the Silver Blade of Lair. This is a single-edged sword that was once wielded by him. It had a palantine blade with a power field generator and an electro-sensor reactive grip handle made out of a blood leather demon skin. It once had the power of a demon that possessed the Primarch. He also has Fireblade, which was a sword wielded by him during the Great Crusade. It was meticulously crafted by Ferris Manus, intended to be the epitome of a perfect weapon. The Fireblade was a power sword known for its ability to generate intense heat. However, Fulgrim later abandoned Fireblade in favor of the Blade of Laren, the Silver Blade of Lair, rendering it less prominent in his arsenal. He also has Anathame which was a powerful sword infused with Nurgle's chaotic essence, forged by the enigmatic Kinenbrak, aliens who coexisted with humanity in the past. So by uttering the name of a target, the blade would transform into a deadly weapon, generating custom-made poisons and toxins designed to harm the specific individual and guiding itself towards the intended victim. He also wields Firebrand, which was a specifically crafted Volkite Charger utilized by him throughout the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy. Among a collection of weapons carried by Fulgrim based on his personal inclination, Firebrand stood out as a masterfully designed and tailored armament. The third Primarch, Porturabo, holds only one type of special weapon, and that is his Logos Armor. This armor was his weapon, providing defense and containing sophisticated command and control systems which linked him cybernetically to every facet of his forces under his disposal and also a shifting array of weapons called the Logos Array was installed in it, which includes a Teleport Homer, a Cortex Controller for controlling Automata, a Nuncio Vox and a Cognis Signum. Jagatai Khan also holds only one specific special weapon called the White Tiger Dao. This, as the name suggests, was a Dao-type sword, but crafted for use by a Primarch, the Khan himself, which means it can cut through virtually anything. It was also very suitable for the Khan's type of warfare, fast hit-and-run tactics, emphasizing on speed and cutting through enemies like butter. The fifth Primarch, Lehman Russ, has quite a few. The first was Kraken Mao. This served as the initial main weapon of Lehman Russ, the Primarch of the Space Wolves. This colossal frost blade was adorned with intricate details and featured teeth sourced from a powerful creature known as the Fenrisian Kraken. Unfortunately, Krakenmaw met its demise when it was shattered by Angron during the Night of the Wolf. After that, he held Mjolnir, which was a frost blade that replaced the Krakenmaw and was also forged from the teeth of the Fenrisian Kraken. Also known as the Sword of Bale Knight, the weapon is also said to be ancient dating back to the Age of Strife. His most famous weapon was the Spear of Ruz, known by many names to the Emperor as the Dionysian Spear, to the Space Wolves as the Wolf Spear, and also as Gungur by a selected few. It was forged by the Emperor and contains his own power inside of it. This weapon was golden in color and probably crafted from Aramite. Its powers inc include the ability to illuminate the enemies it pierces and reveals to them the truth. Then we have the Axe of Hellwinter, which was Ross's favorite weapon. 
a deadly frost axe crafted from the Kraken teeth of the legendary beast bearing the same name. Its edge is infused with the power of the Kraken's teeth and enhanced by a disruption field generator, enabling it to split battle tank armor with a single strike. Rogel Dawn had a couple of weapons. The first is Storm's Teeth. It was an immense chain blade that only a Primarch possessed the strength to wield it effectively. Originating from the skilled craftsmen of Inwit, the weapon was crafted for Dawn even before the arrival of the Emperor. With its razor sharp teeth, Storm's Teeth had the ability to effortlessly shred any substance it encounters. Then he also has the Voice of Terror. This was a tactical boulder bestowed upon Rogel Dawn as a mark of his appointment as the Praetorian of Terror, presented by the Adeptus Custodes. This weapon was crafted based on the design of the Custodes' own armaments, with modifications made to accommodate the immense strength and stature of a Primarch. The seventh Primarch on this list, Conrad Curse, also has only one type of weapon called Mercy and Forgiveness. These are lightning claws that are specialized versions of Power Fist technology often employed alongside Terminator armor. These claws sacrifice pure crushing power in favor of incorporating multiple razor sharp blades that extend from the armor itself. Mercy and Forgiveness were a deadly set of lightning claws wielded by Curse to great effect. Now we come to Sanguinius. The two primary weapons of the Blood Angel is the Blade and Carmine, which is a power sword clad in a golden colored ornate handle and a silver double edged blade. The other is the Spear of Telesto, which is a long spear with a blade shaped like a tear with a hollow center symbolizing the single drop of blood Sanguinius shed to swear fealty to the Emperor. Its shaft is golden with a sculpted hooded angel of blood and a purity seal. Aside from the deadly cuts from the blade, it can also emit a blast of directed energy which vaporizes anyone who isn't a blood angel. Then he also wields the moon silver blade which was a secondary backup weapon that is used against demons of the warp. It was crafted by Rogel Dawn for Sanguinius. It wasn't as ornate or as beautiful as the blade and carmine but still an artifact to behold. Lastly, he also has the Infernus pistol which shoots an unknown type of ammunition that can kill anything or penetrate almost any armor. As for Ferris Manus, he holds only one type of weapon called the Forge Breaker. This was the legendary Thunder Hammer of Manus. The handle of the weapon was deep black hue resembling ebony, adorned with intricate gold and silver threads woven in the form of a lightning bolt. The face and claw was skillfully crafted to resemble a majestic eagle with a pointed beak forming the striking surface and its sleek wings resembling sharp claws. Unfortunately, after Manus's death, the weapon is now used by Perturabo. The tenth Primarch on this list is Angron and he has quite a few weapons. Gorechild and Gorefather were a deadly pair of ancient chain axes and were amongst the most potent weapons known amongst the relics of the Primarchs and was used by Angron in the Great Crusade. But before this, Angron utilized Widowmaker and Brazentooth. These were two other chain axes that were his initial Primarch weapons. As of the era in Domdus, the chain axe that he uses is called Spine Grinder. As a demon Primarch, he also has other weapons. Black Blade is his personal rune sword, and this gigantic black sword engraved with blasphemous runes, the weapon was powerful enough to instantly annihilate five Grey Knight Terminators in a single stroke. But that isn't his only bladed weapon. The other one is the Saminarius. This demonic sword is of prodigious size and contains the essence of a powerful Slaneshi demon. Gilliman also has quite a few weapons. Like his other fellow Primarchs, he possessed an extensive array of weapons and war gear. Among them were the Gladius in Gander, a master crafted power sword which was a thing of absolute beauty and deadliness. He also has the Hand of Dominion, a formidable power fist which serve as iconic symbols of Gilliman's might and authority. Additionally, he wielded the Arbitrator, a customized combi bolter with exceptional skill in battle. Gilliman was also entrusted with the Emperor's Sword, a renowned weapon passed down to him by the Emperor himself which was imbued with psychic power. Another notable piece of his arsenal was the Iron Halo, an esteemed honor granted to exceptional Astartes as a recognition of their valor. Mortarian's signature weapon is called Silence. This is an enormous two-handed battle scythe serving as the exclusive melee weapon of Mortarion, the Primarch of the Death God Legion. With a blade span surpassing the height of an average human warrior, Silence is recognized as one of the most formidable and intimidating blades ever wielded by any Primarch. The Lantern is also another weapon. 
It is a brass colored pistol. Dating back to the Age of Strife, the pistol was forged by the leader of a cult on Shenlong, which worshipped a dragon god. The lantern was capable of firing power energy blasts and disintegrated living beings. Even after ascending to demonhood, Mortarion still wields the weapon. Now we come to Magnus. He wields the blade of Anunurta. This is a force weapon that emulates the sickle sword in shape. Blending ancient legends with advanced imperial technology, this weapon possesses the ability to cause significant harm to living beings and battle engines. As an ascended celestial sword, it had the capacity to harness and focus the user's psychic abilities for maximum effect. He also wields a sci-fi serpenter, which was a plasma gun employed by Magnus himself. It had the remarkable ability to seemingly materialize in Magnus's hands whenever he required it. This unique characteristic sparked debates, with some questioning whether the sci-fi serpenter was a conventional weapon or merely a manifestation of Magnus's formidable psychic abilities. He also has the Blade of Magnus. This is a weapon of chaos used by Magnus as a demon prince, capable of assuming different forms according to his desires. This malevolent weapon possesses mutagenic properties, allowing it to alter the physical form of those struck by its blades. As for the War Master, Horus holds two types of weapons. The first is World Breaker. Gifted to him by the Emperor after he was named the War Master of the Great Crusade, this massive power mace was easily the size of a man and was marked out with an Imperial Aquila at the base of its grip. It was later destroyed by Abaddon using the talents of Horus to break it into pieces during his battle against a clone of Horus. Then he also had the talents of Horus, which were also known as the War Master's Talon. This was a large archaic lightning claw fitted with an early custom-built combi bolter for use by Horus Lupercal himself. It is a bulky and somewhat crude device but very effective weapon with belts of ammo being fed into the bolter part. Aside from the five fingers of the lightning claw, there also exists an extra thumb blade on the side. Lorgar had one weapon and that it was called the Illuminarum and no, it's not what you think, it's not his bald head illuminating. This was a meticulously crafted scepter power maul created by Manus for Lorgar. This weapon matched the length of an Astartes warrior and possessed exceptional balance, perfectly tailored to complement Lorgar's strength and stature. It was a formidable weapon, reflecting both its ornate design and the formidable capabilities. Vulcan, the Salamander's Primarch, was the biggest and the tallest Primarch. Well, not until the traitors became demon princes. Anyway, he loved hammers. <laughs> he loved hammers and he was black, so once you go black, you never go back. There were three of them, the hammers that he uses in battle. Dawnbringer was originally intended for Horus as a gift, but after Vulcan sensed a darkness within his brother, he held onto the war hammer and it became his personal weapon. But the other is Thunderhead. This was the earlier Thunder Hammer of Vulcan and was replaced by Dawnbringer. And then we have Doom Tremor which was crafted after Vulcan lost Dawnbringer, Doom Tremor was a powerful weapon, able to absorb incoming energy attacks and redirect them towards the enemy. It was also so heavy that even Terminator suits couldn't lift it. Now as for Corvus Corax, he has the Raven's Talons. Forged them himself, Corax forged the Raven's Talons to be unbreakable and to be able to cut through anything, even the most powerful of armors. They are lightning claws and were used by Korax to cut word bearers left and right in the drop site massacre. And oh yeah, he almost cut off Logar's head, that shiny moon, with those deadly weapons. And lastly, we have Alpharis and Omegon, or Alpharis Omegon. Anyway, they hold the Sari Sanator, also known as the Pale Spear, it was used by the twin Primarchs and was rumored to be a strange Xenos artifact, an alien one, an alien device whose original forging predated even the Eldari. So maybe it was one of the old one's weapons or maybe even Necron. It was a greenish spear with a double-edged blade and can face in and out of reality, therefore giving the ability to penetrate all types of defenses. I'm thinking it was kind of or maybe it is of Necron origins. Anyway, after the battle in Pluto where Rogaldon cut off Alpharis' head, the Pale Spear was lost to the Alpha Legion, and its whereabouts are unknown currently. Maybe held by the Imperial Fists, maybe by the Custodes, or maybe by the Ordo Xenos. So those are all the Primarch's special weapons, melee and ranged. 
Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Do hit that like button for support and subscribe to push us through the algorithm. But most of all, smash that bell icon for regular updates on new videos. Take care, boys.